Hey everyone, April Dunham here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take a form control in Power Apps and split it over multiple screens. But first, here's the intro. be wondering why we'd want to take a form control and split it out over multiple screens. Sometimes when you're building a Power App, you have a bunch of information that you need to collect from your users. While you could put this in a form control and put it on a single page like we see here, there's a lot of scrolling involved. Also, with the way that it's set up right now, you can't really tell that there's more information that needs to be filled out. The user kind of has to intuitively know to scroll. From a user experience standpoint, this isn't really ideal. A better approach would be to break this out into bite-sized chunks. As you see here, I have some arrows for back and forth, and I'm breaking it out into different sections. That way, there's no scrolling, and the user knows what they have to do next. When they get to the end, this will change to a check mark so they know this is the end of the form and they can submit it. Luckily, this isn't too difficult to implement, so let's take a look. The first step is going to be taking a look at your form and seeing how you can logically break it out. In my case, it was fairly simple because this is a safety checklist, so there are certain categories for this checklist that I could break them out into. Once you decide how to break out your form, you'll go in and add new screens for each of the different sections. I've already did that here, and in each screen, I've went in and added a form control. I chose the edit form control in this case. For this customer info screen, there are only three fields that I want to show. So in my form control, I just added the fields here, and I've repeated this process for each of the different screens. So here in the sprinkler form control, I'm only surfacing up these fields. This part's the easy part. On each of your individual screens, you'll want to put in some kind of icon so the user can toggle back and forth between the forms. On every screen, your back button will always just go back so you can use the back formula on the on select. For the forward button, you're going to need to submit your form control. On its on select, just use the submit form function and pass in the form. When you're chaining together forms like this, you're going to have to identify one screen that sets this process in motion, which in my case is the customer info screen. So if I were to go in here and I'm adding a new item, I'm going to start on this customer info screen and submit the form. So if I'm doing a new one on my customer info, I'm going to want the mode of this to be a new form because I'm submitting a new item. But to chain these together, that means when I go to any of the other screens here, these are actually going to be edit mode forms. So I'm going to initially submit the new item with whatever my initial intake screen is here. And then all the other forms will be edits off of what was initially submitted here on that first screen. That means we'll have to use a formula to tell it once this is submitted, change the mode of all of my child forms to edit and update that record. Let's take a look at how to do that piece. Since this is my starting form, we'll take a look at its next button first. The only thing I'm doing here in the next button on select is submitting this particular form. Now let me start with a common mistake that I see people do when they're trying to implement this chaining of forms together in multiple screens. Here on the on select of the button when you're moving to the next screen, you'll often see people add in the logic to move to the next form and change its mode here. The problem with doing it here is that if for some reason this submission failed for this form, like maybe I forgot to put in the required customer field here, then it's still going to proceed with your logic and the subsequent submissions of the form will have errors. The way to get around this is to use the form controls on success property. If you select your form control and go to the properties drop down in the upper left hand corner, you'll see an option for on failure, on reset, and on success. In our case, we only want to move on to the next piece of the form if this submission here succeeded. So if we go to the on success property, this is where we'll want to put in our logic that's letting us go to the next screen. You'll see a couple formulas here. The first is I'm setting a global variable called form type and I'm setting that to edit. Because after I initially submit this new item, I want all of my other form controls to be edit mode. So I'm going to use a global variable to check what the mode is and set it correctly in my other forms. This other one here is another global variable that I'm setting called selected item. 
and I'm going to set that to this form controls last submit. That way I'll get the record for my child forms that I'm wanting to update. And then finally here, we're just navigating to whatever that next screen is. So all we're really doing here is we're gonna repeat this same formula and process for each of the different screens in your app. Let's take a look at the next screen in the process, which is our sprinkler info screen. Now let's take a look at the form control for this and let's go to its default mode property here. This is where I'm using that global variable that we just set in the on success of our previous form. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if the form type is new, then I want the mode of this form to be new. But if it's not, if it's edit, then I want the form mode to be edit. Now let's take a look at the next button for this one. All we're doing again, like we'll do for all of these, is submitting the form. Now if we look at the sprinkler form here and go to the drop down and look at its on success property, you'll see that I'm updating our selected item global variable to the sprinkler forms last submit. So this is the only difference between this and the very first submission here. Each time that we move to a screen and submit the form, we need to update this selected item variable to the last submission. That way it's getting the most updated data that we submitted. And then we're just navigating to the next screen. That's really all there is to it to chain these together. The only other thing is on my landing screen here, you'll see that we can initiate a new request or see an existing one. So the only thing that I'm doing there is when you select an item, I'm using that same form type global variable and setting it to edit when I select one from this gallery. And I'm setting that selected item global variable to what's ever selected here in the gallery so that when we go now to this first screen here, our customer info, it's going to pull in the data from whatever we selected in the gallery because the form control here has that same default mode setting to check if the form type is new and switches the mode accordingly. And then also on each of these form controls here, you'll wanna go into the item property and make sure that's set to the selected item so that it pulls in the appropriate record. All right, that's all there is to it for this one. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.